If you ever try generating AI videos or images, you already know the pain. Well, that is insane subscription fees, limited control, and models that you can't even customize. And if you tried running them on your computer, well, good luck. You'll need a high-end GPU and a small fortune in electricity, right? But what if I told you there's a way to run any open source AI model and make unlimited number of videos and have a complete control over and do it for just a fraction of the cost. Today, I'm going to show you how you can do it exactly. And once you see it, you will never go back to overpriced subscription again, like foul, you know, playing and something like that. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, once you're on this page, uh, you will see something like this. But before that, you need to add some money into this. Let's just say ten dollars in the billing section, or it says add funds in here. And after that, you'll be uh, click on uh, click on the sports, and you will be back to the same page. Uh, now, since you have the money in there um, now, then you can see here it will say secure cloud and community cloud. So if we click on community cloud, you'll be seeing all these GPUs which are available or not available. And then, for example, this GPU is available right now. It's costing us 69 cents per hour, but the same GPU is going to cost you in the secure uh, cloud, which is going to be about, I think, 89 cents per hour. Now, what is the difference? Why the different cost? Well, the community cloud is um, the GPUs in the in this community cloud is like, you know, they are being shared. So whenever you are using the, the you know GPU and when you stop it, it might not be available uh, sometimes when you start again because somebody else might be using it okay but it is not uh, that case I mean it will always not be available it's um, most of the times 80% of the time is it is available so nothing to worry about but in the secure cloud if we go with that uh, the GPU that you select will be always yours it will always be available because you kind of um, secure the spot so for now uh, we will be going for the community cloud and here click on the filters and then here you have to select the CUDA version of 12.8 and then you uh, select um, go for any of the cloud you know GPUs but the model that we are going to be using uh, right today is WAN 2.1480p model so I'm gonna go with this because uh, the video generation time might be a little bit of less and you know for that one so let's click on it and then click on change a template here you have to either you just simply type um, comfy ui origin scroll down here you can see this comfy ui uh, one click or oh, van 2.1 2.2 cuda 12.8 just click on it and then you can keep a name here let's just say new pod whatever just keep the name pod name and then you click on the template now here it says the container disk volume is 200 gigs which is a temporary space that means whatever you do when you start the port it will download all the models and that that's it and when you stop the port everything will be deleted nothing will be saved but if you keep the volume disk uh, let's just say I'll just keep 100 gigs because the models are a little bit of uh, you know high in size uh, so I'll just keep 100 but you're also paying for this but it is not that much I think it might be like 59 cents a day uh, so yeah whatever the storage that we are occupying we are also paying for that one as well so here nothing to uh, touch about and just click on the environment variables now here we have to you know download the models uh, since it says download 480p native models um, I'm gonna go with this one I'll just write true and the rest of the things I'll just leave it as it is because I only want this uh, for uh, for this video but you can also go with the 720p models okay so let's go ahead and just set overrides and then scroll a little bit down and deploy on demand okay once you do that you will see this and click on the my pods it will start you know making the pod I mean downloading all the things in the pod now uh, since we have now it's kind of downloading in the background all these things let's click on the logs you will see everything what's happening if you can see here it is downloading all these models okay so let's just see Mo downloading this model is 65 MB it has been done uh, so like this it's gonna take a while I think 10 to 15 minutes maybe uh, depending on the server that we have used all right if you can see here I think everything is downloaded uh, maybe go okay it says starting a UI and now the comfy UI is up which means we can use the comfy UI now so let me click on the connect and I think let's go 
so this is what you will see the first time uh, okay so now just cancel this all right and uh, let's go with this uh, workflows it says when 2.1 and then we will go with the native image to video 60 fps JSON all right click on it that's it just close this one and this is the model that we can use all right so it has everything it has all the things uh, if you can see this is the loaders this is our diffusion model uh, if you can see here we have like three models that we can use uh, one 2.1 image to video text to video text to video so in image to video we have 4 ATP with 14 billion parameters but in uh, text to video we have uh, 1.3 billion parameters and 14 billion parameters so if we go with 4 ATP uh, you know this one uh, 480 p 14 billion parameters with image to video let is let's just try nothing rest of the things you don't need to touch anything about that and it this is a prompt field a woman walking towards the viewer okay and this is a positive prompt this is a negative prompt and this is the you know the resolution of the video that you want to keep okay and then here uh, this is the point where you upload the image that you want to kind of, uh, you know, kind of animate or something. Okay. And then these are the things uh, which kind of makes the uh, upscaling the, you know, all these models like, you know, it upscales and then at the end, it gives you the final video. Let, let's just try once. Okay. Uh, if we try to run the same thing, we haven't loaded any image. Let's try to run with this prompt. If I click on run, okay, it says load the image. Okay, perfect. So then we have to click on upload. All right, and then we hit run because the prompt is a woman walking towards the viewer. We can just uh, write anything, but let's just say, uh, let's just go with this one. Click on run. And this is going to start the, you know, uh, this model to load and just kind of run this to make an image if you can see on the left side it says running the first time it will take a little bit of time because it has to load the model but when you uh, make one image when it uh, when you start making any uh, any of the you know uh, results then the second time the third time it will be faster and also you can see the time when it will be completed to generate one image since we are with the 480p so it will not take that much of time i think um, my estimate would be like 200 to 300 seconds or maybe like three 400 seconds since we are on the 480p model with 14 billion parameters that means it is the highest parameters from van 2.1 okay so let's wait and see what will it generate so if you can see here uh, we have got something here if you can see this is the output and now it's going to kind of you know uh, upscale it and just make some other changes to do right now it's here and this will be the final one let's wait, wait for this result and you will have your own i mean if you're not happy with the results you can directly just generate and regenerate it again and so this is the final result with 60 fps results it's so smooth it is great and that was our image this was our image it the images are already not you know not i would say the hd because i just uh, downloaded from the internet directly uh, so that's why the results might not be very clear because it's not it's a little bit blurry okay but look at the face and the clothes and the final result it is insane i mean really it hasn't changed her face or anything it is perfectly uh, perfect all right now uh, we can just try another things i mean we can just do more and yeah one more thing if uh, we want to save this we will also be able to save this okay i click on the save preview and now it has been saved you got it so yeah that's it uh let's just try to generate one more uh, image using uh, you know video using this but i'm gonna show you how much time it took us to generate this video if you can see 271 seconds 
it took us 271 seconds to generate so if we do this it's 271 divided by 60 that is four point I mean four uh, minutes and 51 seconds uh, it took us so if we generate another image then it will be faster let's go with another image okay let's just click on choose file and then let's just choose this image uh, the horse one and write the prompt uh, the horse is running let's just say walking walking and okay let's keep it short okay walking and click run and this time it will be faster than the before okay it's already at 43 percent of this point this one okay let's wait all right so uh this was the image as you already know and if you can see the results have been generated and this looks real smooth so uh smooth and uh so high quality and i think yeah this is the best one so far i think uh to get hands on the model now let's go ahead and just uh, trigger this using API in NDSN. For that thing, just uh, add the schedule trigger node, and then for every API that requires the HTTP node request, so the method is post. Now you might be wondering, like, what is the base URL? If you can see at the top, the comfy UI that we are running on has a URL. Just copy and paste it, and put it on expressions, and add a prompt. Okay, that's it. And then after that, we don't need uh, any authentication or something, but yeah, we just need to turn on the send body and put it on JSON and using JSON. So for the JSON, what you have to do is first go to settings in the Comfy UI and put on this dev mode. This kind of enables the API endpoint request. And then click on workflow again and export API. Because we need send body, so for that thing, we need to download this file, the entire workflow and then wait for it to download and open it up. Using uh, any editor, I'm gonna be using the VS Code. You can download it from Google and just download it and open it up. You just entirely copy the all contents in here. Let's go ahead and do that. And then uh, just go to the NA10 and paste it in this box. Now I'm going to show you something else uh, since this contains we need to kind of control the prompt to generate so if you guys already know that we didn't we just uh, generate the prompt from a previous node and then drag and drop that JSON in here and it generates but I'm going to show you a different way here just to kind of show you that you know how you can trigger this using the NHN. Let's delete this schedule trigger first. Chat trigger. Okay, it means that we can send a prompt from the chat trigger and feed that into the endpoint and then that's it. So let's go ahead and execute and let's try something. And let's hit send. And this will uh, generate the node in here and just simply drag and drop that chat received from that previous node. We need to find that, where is it? Okay, here we go. Inside the double quotes, we need to drag and drop it. That means on the right side, you can see the prompt, that's it. Okay, now when you execute this, it will you know push the request to the Comfy UI. You can even track it, That uh, you don't need to do it, but you can track it. You can see it says running, and there's one more uh, request that has been pending right now, but it hasn't um, pushed to the Comfy UI. Now I'm going to show you how you can get the URL or the video directly in NA10 so that we don't need to go in the Comfy UI run pod. So for that thing, let's add the bait node first because it takes time to generate the video, obviously. For the sake of the video, let's keep it one second. And let's add another HTTP request node for the get method and the base URL remains the same, but there's some a little bit of extension that we need to add. So this is the final URL, and you can see at the end, it has this prompt ID node, which means that we are fetching that request. So if we execute, right now we will not get anything because the video is still being generated. If you can see here, that's right. 
let's go ahead and try again okay there we go we have just got the details from the get uh, request as you can see here it has output this contains the uh, video in the format of webm now we need to convert this into the binary or the link or something so that we can fetch the video directly in the uh, nhn just copy the paste to this, uh, this node again and we need to change the base url in this case so this is the URL, and but you need to change this uh, JSON, but we need to drag and drop the JSON from the previous node. So let me delete this and drag and drop this one in here. Let's go ahead and delete it first. There we go. Now, if we just hit execute, we will get the video in the binary format and we will be able to see the video directly from NA10. So that's it. You can see the video is like running. So that means we can simply go ahead and just do whatever we want to do. We can control this, we can automate this, everything. So guys, that's it. If you have any questions for me, I can drop down the comments and you can even also reach out to me on Instagram. I would definitely help you. So yeah, that's it. I mean, um, this is not that easy to do. So you might be kind of confused, but uh, I'm always here to help. You can even try it out and it's the best thing to do uh, if you are someone who is uh, into creating content. So have a good day guys. Feel free to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel.